you know, we met here last weekend and we talked about, you know, what are we inspired in in the book? And we talked about a lot of things. We talked about how this is really a rural, working class gay romance. It's not glamorous at all. Um, and uh, we talked about some other stuff. And then we started talking about, well, you know, in the story, they're always so hot for each other because they can only see each other here and there every so often. And it keeps their relationship in its infancy. They're always in the heat of the beginning of their relationship, even after 15, 20 years. Um, and so I started thinking about, well, what would it have been like if Jack got his wish and they were able to build a life together, you know? And they had become a long-term couple and they fucking hate each other like straight people do after 20 years? <laughs> I think. I don't know. I only have one set of parents. I grew up in Florida. It was an interesting environment, you know. I'm just like, is that, is that what people do when they're married? They just kind of snipe at each other and not have sex? That sounds awful. I want my right to get married. <laughs> Ennis pulled Jack's hand to his mouth, took a hit from the cigarette, exhaled. Sure as hell seem in one piece to me. You know, I was sitting up here all that time trying to figure out if I was, I know I ain't. I mean, here we both got wives and kids, right? Like, I like doing it with women. Yeah, but Jesus H, ain't nothing like this. I never had no thoughts of doing it with another guy, except I sure rang it out a hundred times thinking about you. You do it with other guys, Jack? Shit, no, said Jack, who had been riding more than bulls, not rolling his own. <laughs> you know that. Old Brokeback got us good, and it sure ain't over. We gotta work out what the fuck we're gonna do now. That summer, said Ennis, when we split up after we got paid, I had gut cramps so bad I pulled over and tried to puke, though I ate something, thought I ate something bad at that place in Dubois. Took me about a year to figure it out that I shouldn't have let you out of my sights. Too late then by a long, long while. Friend, said Jack, we got us a fucking situation here. Got to figure out what to do. So this is what, it, what I wrote about that. Uh, the working title is Everybody Needs a Buddy. <laughs> Every Tom needs a Huckleberry. Every Huck needs a Jim. Every Ennis needs his Jack. And every Frodo needs a Sam. <laughs> Someone to pack your pipe when you don't want to smoke alone. Someone to trim your beard when your mirror's up and broke. Everybody needs a real good friend. Every Batman needs a Robin. Every Blues needs a brother. Every Oscar needs his Felix, and every Bowie needs a pop. Someone to help you raise a tent. Someone to babysit your sheep. Someone to drive your mule to town and help you get some sleep. Everybody needs a real good friend. Every Edward needs his Gaveston. Every Jonathan his David. That's in the Bible. <laughs> Every Tab Hunter, his Tony Perkins. Every Quixote, his Sancho. Someone to shine your boots. Someone to clean your knife. To show you through the shady grove and give you back your life. A friend to while away the hours, give harmonica to your songs. A friend to cook your eggs and beans, make you write when you're feeling wrong. Everybody needs a buddy. What's a wrangler without a hoss? Or a rattlesnake without a rattle? What's the mountain without the coyote? Or the boots without the saddle? Someone to strum the strings along and pat your dogs when they bark. Someone to shoulder half your sky and find you in the dark. Thank you.